Mystery Romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Ah, sailor, now there's a sight that warms the cock of little man's heart. I tell you, just sitting here on the beach and watching a girl like that cavort, carefree, gay, look at her. Look at that cartwheel. Just nothing. I've got cartwheels you don't even know about. Let me just relax and enjoy the scenery, huh? You know, I think that girl likes me, sailor. You mean her, Alice Markle? You think that's why she's turning cartwheels? I don't knock it. It hits people different ways. Or is it because she gave you a buck to take out her laundry and dry cleaning? Well, it's not the dollar, sailor. When she checked into the hotel, I told her such services were gratis. But she wouldn't hear of it, Chief. Hey, your Alice Markle just took a nosedive. I've got to admit it, Slate. She looks pretty good with her nose in the sand. What's the matter with her? She's not moving. Maybe she likes to sniff sand. I've heard about her. Come on. Miss Markle, are you all right? Help me. Sure, give me a hand with her, Sally. All right. Hey, something really is wrong. My father. Take me to my father. Hold it a minute, sailor. Now you can put her down now. Gently. You got any glib words now, kid? This girl is dead. A bullseye, senor. Huh? I know it is. With my eyes closed, I know it. I felt it. You enjoy the refinements at our hotel, senor. Huh? The exquisite service, the soft beds, the private pistol range. It's shoddy, it's dull. I've been waiting for you, room clerk. You kept me waiting. I sat down to tea with a girl, poison her. All you have to do is follow her, but she gets away from you. That's a fault. You let her die in a place we don't know. That's a fault. I'm not ashamed to confess the dead girl was too clever for me. Twenty years I've waited for it. Break the graves of the world for it. Put classified ass in the papers of the world. Then she brings it to me. You let it slip away. A tabard of the Pizarro's. Tabard. Tabard. I have seen such tabards under the glass in our museum. It is a nightgown without sleeves, like, like a crumbling shroud. For this you kill? I kill. Take a lesson from an old antique dealer. The Pizarro brothers wore tabards over their armor when they conquered South America. They spilled their blood in them. And that made them worth the jewels of the world. So Alice Markle teased you with it and died because you wanted it for nothing and locked the secret of its whereabouts in the closet of death. And I'll find it, Hooper. I'll find it. I'll... You are an interesting man, senor. You desire this tablet as other men desire. <laughs> A very interesting man. <laughs> Late, I want to shake your hand. Well, now, that's mighty decent of you, sailor. Go right ahead. Take any hand you want. Now that we're shaking, why are we? You tell him why, King. Give me the hand that's left over, Mr. Sleet. I want to shake it. <laughs> what goes on here? A simple matter, Mr. Sleet. Inspector LaSalle came and went, asked you questions, and you gave him answers. Nobody got mad at nobody. That is why he's shaking. <laughs> Congratulations. And mostly because even LaSalle admits you're not involved in the murder of Alice Markle. Okay, okay. Let go of the hands. I... I want to stroke my chin and think of something. Of me? About Alice Markle. You told LaSalle you weren't going to mix in. 
I told him I didn't know anything about her murder. That's all I told him. A girl, a blonde kid, registers at my hotel and drops dead in front of me. Poison, the medical examiner just told us. Why should a thing like that happen? That is a point to consider, Miss Sailor. All right, all right. Look, look, Sailor. The girl died calling for her father. We ought to try to find him. All right, we ought to try to find him. But where? Where are we going to look? We could start on Paseo Lorca. Well, that's a nice street. Shady, lots of shops. Only why do we start there? Why don't we pick any street at random? When Alice Markle registered, she wrote down this address here. 126 Paseo Lorca. This is a page from the register. You didn't show it to Inspector LaSalle. <laughs> so you wasted a handshake on me. Want it back, sailor? Or do you want to come along? <laughs> writes her home address in a hotel register, and it turns out to be a hat shop. Straw hats, grass hats, bamboo hats. What kind of home is that for a girl, Slate? Yeah, let's ask the sleeping man, shall we? Hey, Chico, wake up. Hey, wake up. I wasn't sleeping, tourist. Little eccentricity of mine. I pretend sleep, peek through my hat as the customers walk in, listen to what they have to say. If I like them, I weave them a headpiece. I don't, I kick him in the shins. Oh, you'll like us, because we like you. Any man who weaves bamboo hats, what's not to like? Besides, uh, ever see shins like mine, hat man? Glory be, never. You just won yourself a free hat, girlie. And for your gent... For her gent, weave some information about a girl named Alice Markle. Alice? You got a right to ask me about her? Yeah. We sat on the beach and watched her die. Now, give me the right. Dead. Alice, dead. Dead. She registered to my hotel. Gave this as her home address. Why? I only tell you, gent, because you seem to have cared for her. For three days, the extra room upstairs was her home. You're a relative? A friend of her father's. A man who was charged with the murder of his wife. A man who was judged insane, buried in stone for 15 years. A man who couldn't give his daughter a home. Where is her father now? I don't know. Maybe he's out. Maybe he's still in the sanitarium. The girl didn't tell me. All she asked was that I give her a place to sleep for a few days because I was once a friend of her father's. Yeah. I'm sorry I crowded you, friend. It's just that the girl was... Beautiful, young, a child. I see you agree, gent. Now perhaps you could do something for her because she's dead. What could we do? I'll show you. You see this? It's a tabard. The tabard of one of the Pizarro brothers. Close your mouth, Slade. Who wouldn't know a thing like that? It's a what, friend? There are only two in all the universe. Priceless, fabulous. I have them both. Lucky you. Take this one to Robert Hart at the Hotel Pinar del Rio. Ask him if he wants to buy the pair. You want. Tell him Jeffrey, the hat weaver, has them both to come to me for the other one. A question, hat weaver. Why should we do that with this, uh, this, whatchamacallum? Because it was a dead girl's wish. You need more reason than that, Slate Shannon? Look at you, Slate. You're known. The keeper of dead girl's wishes, they call you. You'll live up to it, Mr. Shannon? Yeah, wrap it up. How am I going to look carrying a loose tabard into a hotel? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cut it out, Hambone. I was just admiring this layout, that's all. Ever seen a swankier hotel than this in all your life? Shannon's place by candlelight. Well, you could put Shannon's place behind that sofa over there and still have room for a polo game. <laughs> Ring the desk bell, Slate. Si, senor. Oh, I'm looking for a man named Robert Hart. Si. Uh, it is who looking for him? Me and him. Oh, which is understood. And why? This I must ask because Senor Hart has left instructions not to disturb. Oh, tell him it's about a... Um, it's about a what, sailor? A tavern. Pizarro tablet. There, I said it, and it sounds just the way I thought it would. I see. 
Uh, Senor Hart is at the moment in the gentleman's gymnasium, amusing himself and getting sweaty by uh, bouncing a handball against the wall. Uh, take me to him. Uh, to you, with pleasure. Uh, the lady, I'm sorry, is not permitted. Oh, come off it, old boy. I've seen men bounce handballs before. Take a care back to Shannon's place, sailor. What? Sure, I'll get rid of this, uh, uh, this what? Tabard. Yeah, this tabard. A couple of games of handball, a rub down. I could use the exercise. Exercise? It's your funeral slate. See you back at Shannon's place. Senor Hart! Hey, tear yourself away from it. You have an admirer. Now, don't call me names, kid. Admire that amateur? Ha <laughs> ha, wait till you see me on the court. Like the wind, like the wind. Yeah, hello. I'm all such you like the way I play. That's why he brought you to me? Uh-huh. I tickled him under the chin with a tabard. Uh, the tabard of Pizarro. Interested? The tab? You have it? Yeah. In this brown paper bag. A regular museum piece, huh? <laughs> Personally, it leaves me limp with cold. Where'd you get it? Jeffrey, the hat man at the sale locker. He says if you want to buy, he's got the other one. They come in pairs, I hear. Like towels, like his and hers. You got expensive tastes and antique bath mats, huh? You lie. You stole it from Alice Marco. You stole it. Cheated me of it. You got sweat in your eyes, Buster. I told you, the hat man. Huh? Alice Marco. You know her, Buster? You know she's dead? I read obituaries. It's a hobby with me. Ramos. I've been waiting for you to ask me. Senor! Uh, hey, what the... the... law on the back of the throat, senor! Where is the... Get Get <laughs> He said he was like a wind on the court. A wind. Well, let's take him someplace where he'll blow away. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. A lovely girl, she fall on Havana Beach, stretch her fingers for life, but beyond her reach. She called for her father, for her father she sighed, but on Havana Beach, a lovely girl, she died. Mr. Slate, go to look for she, father so dear, find a straw hat man who did share a tear. He sent Mr. Slate on a delicate mission, to sell an antique but no salesman's commission. He wouldn't have taken it if it had been offered, King. I know he wouldn't. I think he wouldn't. That character, I'll bet he would. No, Lady Sailor, he would not. You are closer to Mr. Slate than anyone in seven universes. Better than anyone in the mansions of Taurus de Bull, do you know him? All the constellations of the seven seas of sky of... You better be handing out pamphlets with a pitch, King. Oh, Lady Sailor, I... Oh, forget it, King. Just bothers me that a man can spend so much time showing around a tablet of Pizarro. Perhaps Mr. Slate was seduced by a game of handball. Ha! Add another ha. That gives you ha ha. I'll put it another way. How long can a man play handball? With Mr. Slate, it could be a career. If all he brings home is a blister, I'll throw it in his face. I'll... Shannon's place, Sailor Duval speaking. Is Mr. Shannon there, Miss Duval? No, he isn't. Who is this? Jeffrey, the hat weaver. He's still at the Hotel Pinal del Rio? Playing handball, the rumor goes. Personally, I don't believe it. Slate's a cartwheel man. Well, then you'd better come to me. It's important. Something you should know. A hat man's got something every girl should know. Try to keep me away, Jeffrey boy. The joint's yours, King. Do something with it till I bring Slate back. <laughs> Uh, 
Come on, Shannon. Uh, let's go, boy. Oh, that's my boy. Open the baby blues. I want you to take a look around. Get accustomed. Like, for instance, look at your hand. Huh? What? Roll your eyes that way, kid. You're holding a knife. And the knife spinning room clerk Ramos to the floor. Oh. Yeah, that's why you clobbered me, huh? For a frame. Killed Ramos and my prints are on the knife. With that thing lying over there on the table, hot. With that piece of burlap, that tabard thing. Let me prime you first, Shannon. I had to kill the wife of a friend. My partner's wife. Killing Ramos like kissing a dove. That much pain. So get the idea, kid. Wouldn't be any bother at all to scratch you off. Comes back to a piece of burlap on the table. Right. That one and another one. The other one you've got. Oh, I told you a man named Jeffrey has it. I don't know anybody named Jeffrey. You've got it. Tell me where it is, and I wipe the handle of that knife and Ramos. Now, what makes that tablet worth people's dying? Worth the poisoning of a girl with... Worth more lives than you've ever met. The tablet of Francisco Pizarro. Consider it. I've been telling everybody. I wouldn't care if that rag was worn by Tassels O'Hara. I get nothing. Just don't hit me. Look at it. The coat of arms, shining like some inner light. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Worn over the steel of the conquistadores. Fabulous. 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 Yeah. Fabulous. No. In his boat, that time, huh? Shannon, don't kill you. Shannon. Why, Jeffrey, I've never been locked in a hat shop before. If you think you're going to woo me with a mink sombrero, you're a mad hatter if ever I saw one. Let's stop it. You've guessed why I asked you to come, haven't you? I think so. You're Alice Markle's father, aren't you? I saw something in your face when Slate told you Alice was dead. She was my daughter, Mr. Bell. I'm sorry for both of them. But the killing hasn't stopped. You must know that, too. What are you talking about? Where's Slate? Don't sigh at me. I asked you a question. Where's Slate? I don't have an idea. And whatever happened to your daughter might have happened to Slate. Your daughter was murdered, and that wasn't enough for you. Robert Hart murdered my wife. I was indicted for it. I spent 15 years in a madhouse for it. What's that got to do he with... He was my partner. And all the time I was in prison, I knew I would kill him when I got out. The light's dawning, Jeff. You were trying to get Hart to come to you. You sent him your daughter with that tablet to lure him to you. Yes. And he killed her. And then you sent Slate. Now it's my turn to be sorry for you, Mr. Bow. If he's alive... If he's alive, he's someplace in Havana. I'm going to find him. Bye, Jeff. Oh, no. No, I'm coming with you. You know I've got a murder to commit, Mr. Bow. So I can't let you out of my sight. <laughs> King, the man's back from the dead. Where's Sailor? She's out looking for you. I'm glad she's out. Well, what makes you so glad? She will not see at first hand the bruises pasted upon you in this alleged game of handball. She will not see the blood stains on your coat. She will not... Uh... Well, that Sailor, she was born with a fairy godmother waving a short wand over her. The things that lucky girl won't see first hand. The, thing... the things that a girl doesn't know about me will never hurt her. Oh, come right on in, Fabina. Don't just stand there with the dry cleaning hanging from your mouth. <laughs> All I hear is the anchor in my mouth, pretty man, because my hands are full of laundry packages. Take them from me slowly. Two falls out of three, huh, Fabina? <laughs> <laughs> you make such welcome jokes, pretty man. But they are jokes, you know? Well, if it makes you giggle, it's a joke. Here, let me take your packages. And now the dry cleaning from my mouth. Uh-huh. Always carry it that way, Pepina. Good for the teeth. You like my teeth, pretty man? Yeah, now that you ask, I like them. From Dr. Gonzalez. He's friendly credit, ain't it? <laughs> no wobble, huh? 
pay this cleaning. It's for Alice Marco. Stuff I sent out for her. She has no need for it now, Mr. Slade. You know what you just did, King? You just relieved my conscience about tearing it open. Hey. What do you know? A tablet. A second tablet. That's good, pretty much. Oh, you don't know how good, honey. People kill each other for these things. Sailor was looking for me, huh, King? Yes, but I do not know where. The finding of her will be... Child's play. All I do is go to the Palace of Jollies, a dance hall. The last place she looks for me. She hates to admit I ever go there. Child's play, huh? I know child's play, pretty man. Yeah, yeah. Br- bring the laundry around again, Pepina, and we'll rehearse it, huh? One more place, Jeffrey. I've been saving it. If he's there, I'll break his arm. And he's always there. I don't understand. We look all over Havana for Shannon, and all the while you know he's in this place you speak of. Well, I understood it myself. It would frighten me, too. That's the place. Gaudy, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't... You can weave hats, Jeffrey. Don't try for anything else. Wait here. I'll get it. Just permit me your arm, Senor Shannon, and I will lead you to the police station quietly. Slate. How nice for me. You've been arrested again. Now, what took you so long, sailor? I've been waiting an hour. You complaining? You dance the mambo, you get arrested. You take your dance lessons too seriously. People get arrested who do that. And for murder. She couldn't take it, huh? Slate finally killed his dancing teacher. Ramos, the hotel clerk, stabbed with a knife upon which was found the fingerprints of Shannon. We are called to a hotel. There is the body of a man, Ramos. A knife is in him. Now, you make a dull, LaSalle. Maybe I can find some place more interesting. Don't wait up for me. Hey, hey. You are insane, Shannon. I will shoot. I will shoot to kill. Oh, who can hit a moving target? But, Sal, you're a doll boy. Hey, Slate, wait for me. Wait for baby. <laughs> Run fast for an old hat weaver, Jeffrey. Because I've been resting for a long time. In an asylum. In a hole in the wall in Havana. Slate, Jeffrey will kill her if he sees it. From what Sailor told me on the way here, I don't blame you, Jeffrey, but I I can't let you. Now, what about it, Jeffrey? Before we go in to talk to Hart. So many years. So many years I've waited for this. You have a gun, Jeffrey? No. Search him, Slate. Yeah, I'd better. Come on, Jeffrey. We're not playing. Don't try to take it away. It'd kill you, too. Now, what'll it get you, Jeffrey? Come on, give me the gun. The police will take care of him. This moment has been the reason for my living. And when it's over, I don't care what happens to me. Knock on the door, Shannon. This gun says knock. Better do it, Slade. Watch it, Shannon. What are you doing? You're a madman. Jeffrey, you're mad. It was too quick. The gun took him too quick. Too quick. Sailor, pick up that gun. He didn't even know who I was. He didn't even see me. All he did was die. For my wife, for my daughter. There was no joy in it. I killed a stranger. He didn't even know me. What are we going to do with him, Slate? Give him to LaSalle. You do it. I'm going home. All right, sailor. Wait for me. you, Slate? Yeah, it's me. What did the museum give you for the tablets? Picture postcard of the bronze statue of General Gomez y Parade y Sebastian, the brave conqueror of Lake Hermosa. What it says on the other side of the card. Now, go ahead, read it. All right. General Gomez y Parade y Sebastian will be remembered for his brave exploits against the elusive bandits of Lake Hermosa. Since his illustrious charge, 
All wildlife in the region has been extinct. That's nice. But what about the tabard? Oh, Jeffrey wove them in occupation therapy while he was in the sanitarium. They're phonies, sailor. That's life, I guess. I can wear them for a Mother Hubbard. Two changes. Well, what do I get out of it? I get the tabard. You get this. This. With it. Get my loom, sailor. There'll be a weaving of the tabards tonight. And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Full Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.